For all your t-shirt needs, check out Tee Public's Killer Selection. Follow the link in the description. Hey, what's up, people? Pizal here, and following in the footsteps of my last video in which I reviewed 1981's Final Exam, I've decided to revisit some other 80s slasher movies that I've been really kind of meh about in the past, but movies that I've felt compelled to revisit on a fairly frequent basis. And because I've been sick lately and I've had some free time on my hands, it seems like the perfect time to go back and and revisit some of those movies because the sixth time was the charm with Final Exam. I finally consider myself to be a fan of Final Exam. So, one of the movies that I decided to go back and revisit for the purpose of this video is 1982's Girls Night Out. Now, I first rented Girls Night Out from my local video store many, many years ago. I thought it was an easily forgettable, um, just very middle of the road, uninspired early 80s slasher movie. But it's a movie that over the years I would revisit and I would pretty much feel the exact same way after every time I revisited Girls' Night Out. And Girls' Night Out takes place on the DeWitt College campus where some years ago a student by the name of Dickie Kavanaugh killed his ex-girlfriend. He's been remanded to a psychiatric hospital, and the movie opens with him committing suicide. However, fast forward uh, to the night of the big scavenger hunt on the DeWitt campus, and someone claiming to be Dickie Kavanaugh is there picking off the co-eds one by one. And if you've seen Girls' Night Out, you know that the film has one significance, and that is the killer's chosen attire. The killer in Girls' Night Out wears a bear costume. And no, not like a ferocious grizzly bear kind of costume. I'm talking about a goofy-looking teddy bear with curly gray hair, big yellow eyes, and a long, lolling red tongue. The, killer, the killer's choice of weaponry uh, is also unique in that they take some steak knives, tape them together and push them through the paw of the bear costume, and they use those steak knives to maul their victims. And Girls' Night Out, aside from the killer's attire, is your pretty sit them up and knock them down kind of early 80s slasher movie. Um, and what I like about most college campus slasher movies is that uh, the character development portions of the film. We usually always get that opening kill, and then there's a good probably 30 to 40 minutes where we're, we're, we're developing the characters before you know we get to uh, we get to the bodies drop and later on in the film. And in most college campus slasher movies, they fill that character development time with fraternity pranks, parties, just all sorts of college shenanigans that I personally find pretty entertaining. However, in the case of Girls' Night Out, instead of partying and pranks and those sorts of things, although there is some partying, um, the movie decides to focus more on the intricacies of um, dating and relationships um, on this college campus. For instance, we have one guy who is cheating on his girlfriend with another girl. The girlfriend knows about it. This creates turmoil. We've got, uh, one character whose girlfriend has dumped him for some reason, and he's just very listless and depressed the whole movie. We've got another guy, his girlfriend's dumped him for some reason. Again, they, they don't go into any kind of detail. He gets physical with her at a party. He calls her a whore. He calls all the girls at the party whores. The movie's definitely trying to, um, <clears throat> you know, uh, shine the light on him as a, uh, a red herring. Um, but all of this relationship stuff to me just really comes off dull and um, uninteresting. And I could honestly care less. 
Now, when the bear does show up and starts mauling everybody, um, the kills aren't that great, even with the the steak knife claws. Um, there's a little blood here and there, but in, the kills aren't that interesting. It's nothing that's going to really kind of blow your hair back, to be perfectly honest. Um, the characters in the movie um, are kind of flat, too, although we do have a good cast in the movie of recognizable faces. Um, Julie... Um, her last name escapes me, but she was in the Revenge of the Nerds movies. Uh, there's an actress from Friday the 13th Part 2 in the film who you'll recognize. There's an actress from The Burning in the film who you'll recognize. And Hal Holbrook is in the movie. Uh, they're simply to just class the join up. And he gives... We've all seen those paycheck performances. His may be the most paycheck-y paycheck performance I think I've ever seen. Because it's... It's almost as if they drugged him, propped him up in front of a camera, and just had him read off of a cue card. That is the kind of enthusiasm with which he delivers his dialogue in this movie. Um, it is the most paychecky of paycheck performances I think I've ever seen. And I actually, I think Hal Holbrook's son is in the movie too, although I may be mistaken. I remember seeing uh, another Holbrook in the movie, <clears throat> or listed in the, the credits for the movie. Um, but yeah, a very paychecky performance from Hal Holbrook in the movie. Um, Girls Night Out also ends on what I'm sure was intended to be a real shocker of a finale. Um, however, it's one of those kind of reveals that's not shocking at all. And then the movie just kind of ends and I, you're just left to assume that the killer was brought to justice and, and that's you're just left to assume those things. Um, so yeah, a girl's night out, even after this last viewing of mine, I'm still very middle of the road on. It's certainly, it's very much inspired by not uh, Friday, the 13th and Halloween. Um, aside from the killer's attire in the film, there's nothing that really sets it apart from the nameless rabble of other early 80s slashers out there. Um, it's certainly lacking in more of the, uh, the gratuity area. Uh, you guys know what I'm talking about. Um, and it's, it's just kind of dull and boring. I'm, <laughs> I'm just not a big fan of girls night out. However, it does have that, that purity that a lot of early 80s slasher movies had in that it's not pretentious at all. It's not self-aware at all. It knows it's a slasher movie and it doesn't aspire to be anything more than a slasher movie. And I appreciate that. And that's one of the reasons why I find myself revisiting Girls' Night Out on a fairly frequent basis. And I'm sure in a couple of years or maybe even sooner than that, I'll be compelled to revisit Girls' Night Out yet again and maybe my thoughts on the film will change then. Um, I'm not sure. Keep in mind, it took a good five or six views before I, <laughs> I changed my mind on final exam. But yeah, those are my thoughts on Girls' Night Out. Again, very middle of the road. Um, just I'm still very meh. Uh, on Girls' Night Out. If you've seen Girls' Night Out, please let me know your thoughts on it down in the comments section below. If you're not following me on social media, those links are in the description. They're also right around here. If you guys haven't entered the two giveaways that I'm currently running right now, one giveaway in which I'm giving away three high quality um, or three hockey masks on high quality screen accurate blanks uh, or a giveaway in which I'm giving away two bottles of lake water directly from Crystal Lake a.k.a. Camp Noby Bosco in New Jersey, the filming location of the original Friday the 13th. Those links are also in the description. If you like this video, please leave it a thumbs up. Uh, as always, thanks so much for watching. I really appreciate it. Take care, and until next time, peace. Join the A Buck a Month Club and help support my channel on Patreon. Thank you to my current patrons, Kevin Smythe, Orc145626, B-Movie Mike, Stephen Flanagan, Lori Holt, Mitch O'Dell, Craig Farrand, Robert Sobel, Farron Sutton, Jeremiah Lambert, Turi Delamore, Joseph Charlesworth, Grindhouse Grotto, Derek Janna, PB Sam 6, Demon Waffles, and Tim Williams.
Say hello to the internet, Jeremy. Hello to the internet.